In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about sampling distributions by moving into the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. So we'll start by um, defining exactly what a um, sample proportion is. So what is, what is the point estimate of a population proportion? Well, suppose that a random sample of size n is obtained from a population in which each individual either does or does not have a certain, certain characteristic. Like you either have brown hair or you do not have brown hair. Those, that's, what, that's what we mean by you either have or do not have that characteristic. So the sample proportion, which is denoted as P with a little hat over it, okay, a little caret sign over it, we call this literally P hat, is given by P hat is equal to just X divided by N. And this is where X is the number of individuals in the sample who have that specified characteristic. And the sample proportion P hat is a statistic that estimates the population proportion P. So it's just an estimate for the proportion of people or proportion of individuals in a population that have a certain characteristic. Now let me give you an example. So in a Quinnipiac University poll conducted in May, 1,745 reg registered voters nationwide were asked whether they approved of the way the president is handling the economy. So the answer to this question is yes or no. So there's only one of two characteristics going back. You either do have a characteristic or you do not. So in this case, yes, you do support or no, you do not. So 349 responded yes. They approve of the way the president is handling the economy. So obtain a point estimate for the proportion of registered voters who approve of the way the president is handling the economy. Well, that's just this P hat, okay? And you take the 349 who said yes, divided by the 1,745 total, and you get 0 0.20, okay? And so what this is, is this is an estimate for the population proportion. Like there's no way we can call every registered voter, right? So we take a sample, and this sample proportion estimates the real population proportion. All right, let's, um, uh, let's, let's do an example to illustrate um, how we would describe or show the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. Okay, so according to a time poll conducted in June, 42% of registered voters plan to vote in the upcoming election. So for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the real population proportion is 0.42, okay? Even though this is just a time poll, we're just gonna assume that indeed 42% of people will vote in the upcoming election. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion for samples of size 10, 50, and 100. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take 300, and you'll see it on the coming slide, sample proportions. Okay, and what we're going to ask, you know, basically is, um, do you plan to vote in the upcoming election? So in the first time we do it with just 10 people, okay, you know, our P hat will be how many people out of 10? When we do it for 50, it'll be how many people out of 50? And then when we do it for 100, It'll be how many people say they plan to vote out of 100. And we're going to do this each 300 times, okay? I'm sorry, this is x out of 10. Okay, so each one of these is going to have 300 p hats, okay? So let me show you, you know, 10 is a pretty small sample size, right? So let me show you what the histogram of all the 300 P hats look like for sample size 10. Uh, if you look like this, uh, I don't know, does it look like a normal distribution? I don't know, not really. But look at the mean. The mean of the P hats is 0 0.426. Well, that's really close to the real population proportion, okay? And notice what the standard deviation is, 0 0.16. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, the P hats for sample size 50. Oh, wow, look at this. It's getting more normal. Okay, look at what the mean is. Oh, 0 0.426, wow. And look, as we increase the sample size, the standard deviation went from 0 0.16 to 0 0.072, so it went down. 
Now watch when we do it for sample size 100. Wow, look at this. Nice smooth bell curve here, okay? And look what the mean is. The average is the same as P, okay? It's same as the population proportion. And the standard deviation got even smaller. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing this bell-shaped curve, okay? And this is what we call the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. And what we're seeing here is that this sampling distribution looks like a normal distribution. Okay, so what, what we're going to need then is to find the mean of this distribution and the standard deviation. So I know it seems weird, you know, because we were talking about proportions before, but now what is the average proportion? That's what we mean by the mean. Well, it looks like this is centered at 0.42, okay? And then what's a formula to calculate this standard deviation? So some, here's some key points from this. As the size of the sample n increases, the shape of the sampling distribution of that sample proportion becomes approximately normal. Like if you look here, as we increase sample size from 10 to 50 to 100, it gets, it gets more normal. All right, the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion P. Like the center of this graph is centered at 0 0.42, which is what we said the population proportion was. All right, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample portion decreases as the sample size n increases. And we see that when you look at the standard deviation. Every time we increase the sample size, it got smaller. Okay, so now let's put some formulas to this. So the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat. For a simple random sample of size n with population proportion p, okay, so you're going to be given n, and you're going to be told what the population proportion is. The shape of the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal, provided you do this number check. Your sample size times the population proportion times 1 minus the population proportion has to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, this is just a number check. And if it checks out, the distribution will be normal. And I'm going to follow this up, this lecture up with an ex a lecture where we just work a bunch of examples. So you'll actually see me do this number check. Okay, so the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is what we denote as mu sub p hat and that's just equal to the population proportion, okay? So like if you see here, mu, the average, is 0 0.42. So it's equal to whatever the population proportion is. And the formula for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat is sigma p hat, and it's equal to the square root of p times one minus p over n. All right, and this is what I will call also, oh, it's the standard error of the sample proportion or of the proportion. Okay, so just like when we were talking about the sampling distribution of the sample mean, I called the standard deviation the standard error. I'll do the same thing here. So it's just the square root of P times one minus P over N. Okay, so the model from the previous slide requires that the sample values are independent Okay, so when sampling from a finite population, this assumption is verified by checking that the sample size n is no more than 5% of the population size. And then regardless of whether n times p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10 or not, the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is still p, and the standard deviation is still the square root of p times 1 minus p. All right, I'm going to follow this lecture up with some examples, but the big takeaway here is as long as this number checks out, the sampling distribution of p hat will be normal. And the mu sub p hat is equal to p, and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n.